Well, I suppose normal meant the sort of uh, images of life that you saw in uh, the situation comedies of the 40s and, and 50s, um, a sort of a prescribed identity for um, men and women, husbands and wives, kids. Hey, you look at the old, these programs go on and on, you know, they're still in rerun, Father Knows Best, Leave It to Beaver. And what you see there is um, the ideal of life that uh, was being uh, promoted by corporate America and by the government. It, uh, there was a standard way to be a man and a husband, to be a woman and a wife, to be, uh, to be kids. Uh, and uh, usually these people were surrounded by uh, a suburban affluence, a, you know, a station wagon or two in the garage, a refrigerator filled with food. Uh, life was uh, comfortable, provided, of course, you fulfilled uh, these prescribed roles in life. Now, that's the point at which I think some kind of friction or tension began to develop for this generation, at least for some of them. It was the tension between opportunities for freedom, to do your own thing, to become your own person, and another, on the other hand, a repertory of prescribed identities uh, constantly being pushed at you through the media, uh, through um, the advertising of the period. You know, I would say one of the landmark publications of that period that had far more influence than perhaps any of the important novels written was Mad Magazine. If you go back to the original Mad Magazine uh, in the early days, uh, Bill Gaines was putting out in that period, I mean, the satire of the standard American way of life was absolutely vicious. It was a, you know, a vicious satirical treatment of middle-class American life. That magazine was being read in bedrooms by 10, 11, 12-year-olds through this period who were learning from that magazine that their parents were laughing stock. These are the kinds of kids that began to take on the characteristics of a, a Holden Caulfield and Catcher in the Rye uh, without ever reading the book. I mean, they looked around them at the adult world and saw that it was filled with people who had sold out. <laughs> uh, they, were, uh, they were hypocrites. Uh, that's what that's the way Holden Caulfield saw the world. That's the way um, uh, a number of young people growing up through that period saw the world. As a matter of fact, Catcher in the Rye was being prominently assigned in uh, high school um, English classes all through the period. What would you expect children to learn from reading uh, a book like that? Uh, a certain cynicism about uh, their parents. Now, on the other hand, you know, just you have to understand that the parents were coming out of um, a depression and a war. Uh, and they had been living in very reduced circumstances for a very long period of time. Suddenly times were good in America. Uh, it was the biggest boom in world history. America was king of the international industrial mountain. And uh, they simply w took advantage of the opportunity, finally, to have some spending money, to have a career, and they wanted to be generous with their children. But in being generous with their children, they were giving their children a chance to become spoiled brats. Uh, to be outspoken and self-assertive, and uh, and eventually those kids would arrive on a college campus where they would treat uh, their teachers, their professors, the administration, and ultimately the United States government and the uh, and the United States Army in much the same way.